A new report just dropped in the numbers, they're wild. GLP-1 prescriptions for obesity have jumped 587% since 2019. But here's the twist. Over 80% of the people diagnosed with obesity still aren't getting treatment. No shots, no surgery, no support. That gap, that's the real story. Welcome to The Downsized. I'm Christopher Durham. Today we're diving into a powerful new report from Fair Health titled Obesity and GLP-1 Drugs, a Claims-Based Analysis. Fair Health is an independent nonprofit with the largest repository of healthcare claims data in the United States, more than 51 billion records. Their data informs decisions made by policymakers, health insurers, and researchers nationwide. This new white paper examines how GLP-1 medications are being used to treat obesity, and just as importantly, who is still being left behind. This story is personal for me. At my heaviest, I weighed 286.4 pounds. My wife Lorraine and I have lost over 150 pounds together using GLP-1 medications, Epbound, Monjaro, and Terzepatide. We started the downsize to help people see obesity for what it is, a disease that deserves real treatment. We're not doctors, we're just two people who have finally found something that works, and we want to share it with you. So if you're starting out or looking for answers, consult your doctor, have your labs done, and begin building a plan that suits your life. You deserve care that works. And if this video resonates with you, please hit the like button, subscribe, and join our community. Every week we share updates, stories, news, and support to help you on your GLP-1 adventure. Let's break down what this new Fair Health data really shows us. In 2019, just 0.3% of people with an obesity diagnosis were prescribed GLP-1. That's barely a fraction of a percent. However, by 2024, that number had grown to 2.05%. That's a 586.7% increase in just five years. If you're new here and just starting to explore the world of weight loss medications, let's break it down. What exactly is a GLP-1? GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, a hormone your body naturally makes. It helps regulate blood sugar, slows down digestion, and signals your brain that you're full. Medications that mimic this hormone, called GLP-1 receptor agonists, were first developed to treat type 2 diabetes. Drugs like Ozempic and Monjaro are FDA-approved for diabetes while Zepbound and Wagovi are approved specifically to treat obesity. But across the board, these medications have shown powerful results for weight loss and metabolic health. Millions of people are now using GLP-1s as part of a medical approach to treating the disease of obesity. Some of these drugs have also been approved for additional health benefits. Wagovi, for example, has been approved to reduce the risk of major cardiovascular events in adults with obesity or overweight who also have heart disease. As research continues, we're learning that GLP-1 medications may offer a wide range of benefits, far beyond just weight loss. Let's think about the growth of those numbers. These are medications that didn't even exist for obesity treatment a decade ago, and now they're helping reshape how we approach this disease. And it's not just happening with people who also have type 2 diabetes. Among people with an obesity diagnosis but no diabetes, GLP-1 prescriptions rose almost 1,961%. That's nearly 20 times more people. This tells us that a significant shift is underway. Doctors are finally beginning to treat obesity as a chronic medical condition, not a willpower issue. Patients are advocating for themselves, and more providers are getting on board with what the science already tells us these medications work. So who's driving this growth? Well, believe it or not, it's young adults who are leading the way. For patients aged 18 to 39, the use of GLP-1 increased from 0.19% in 2019 to 1.33% in 2024. That's a 587.8% increase right in line with the overall trend. What's different here, though, is the mindset. These younger patients aren't waiting for a health crisis to strike. They're taking action earlier, treating obesity as a disease, and not a moral failure. And honestly, I wish I'd done that too. At 286 plus pounds, I waited way too long to treat what was really going on, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and metabolically. 
So if you're in that 18 to 39 age range and you're already thinking about this, you're ahead of the curve. You're changing the narrative. And it's not just about weight. It's about energy, sleep, hormones, fertility, blood pressure, depression, all the stuff we don't always talk about when we say obesity. These numbers serve as proof that a new generation of patients is stepping forward and asking for help. Or better yet, demanding help. And that is something we should all be paying attention to. Unfortunately, however, most people still get nothing. It's the real kicker. Even with all this momentum around GLP-1s, most people still are not getting any treatment. In 2024, more than 80% of patients with an obesity diagnosis received nothing. No shot, no surgery, no support, nothing. Only 11.2% got a GLP-1 prescription. Just 6.3% received any behavioral health care, and only 0.3%, less than 1 in 300, had bariatric surgery. This is the gap that matters. Because what's the point of a breakthrough treatment if most people cannot access it? If doctors aren't diagnosing obesity, or if insurance won't cover the medications, then the system is failing the majority of people it claims to serve. The stat is not just a number. It represents real people who are still struggling, still unheard, and still being told to just eat less and move more. We've been there. And we know that's not enough. This part, this part hits me hard. In 2019, 47.2% of people on GLP-1s were also getting some form of behavioral health support. Therapy, coaching, counseling, something to help manage the emotional and the mental side of obesity. But in 2024, that number dropped to just 12.4%. That is a 74% decline, and that's a big problem. GLP-1s can change your hunger cues and your cravings. It can diminish food noise, but they don't automatically heal decades of emotional eating, body shame, or disordered thinking around food. Lorraine and I both needed support along the way. Fortunately, we've been on this adventure together. Conversations, commiseration, building sustainable eating habits. It's hard. It's something we talk about every day. That part, that part's just as important as the medication. So if you're considering starting a GLP-1, also ask about other available support because behavior and biology, they go hand in hand. Now let's talk about side effects. Fair Health examined what happens before and after someone without diabetes begins a GLP-1 medication, and they identified some patterns. In the year after starting the medication, the rate of specific health issues increased. Pancreatitis was up 80%, malnutrition was up 75%, dehydration was up 70%, nausea and vomiting was up 50%. These are still relatively rare, but they're worth taking seriously. It doesn't mean GLP-1s cause these issues directly. However, it's a sign that when your appetite drops rapidly and your food intake changes, your body can sense it. That's why it's so important to stay in touch with your doctor, get regular blood work, track your hydration, eat well, eat nutrition's food designed to fuel your body, and do not ignore symptoms. Ask questions if something doesn't feel right. I've had days where I didn't eat enough, where I felt off balance. It happens. But when you're prepared, it's manageable. I mean, I've had days where I almost passed out because with that weight loss, my blood pressure also improved, and the blood pressure medication that I was on was no longer necessary, so it was causing me to be dizzy. Stay in touch with your doctor. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Let's talk about one of the most significant shifts in obesity care, what people are choosing instead of surgery. Between 2019 and 2024, the number of bariatric surgeries decreased by 41.8%. At the same time, GLP-1 prescriptions for people with obesity but who didn't have surgery rose by 339.5%. That's not a coincidence. More patients are turning to GLP-1s because they offer a non-invasive option. It's still serious medicine, but it doesn't require weeks of recovery, surgical risks, or huge upfront costs. <coughs> Surgery is a great option, and it can be life-saving. For some people, it's absolutely the right choice. 
However, what this data reveals is that for many, GLP-1s are opening the door to a treatment that might have never been considered before. And that's a win for access. Let's talk about the brands. How do they break out? Let's take a look. Let's see who the biggest movers are. Well, Ozempic, of course, the behemoth of the category, was up 1,504%. Manjaro went from 0 to 0.9%. Wagovi, Saxenda, and Zepbound were up 2,029%. Wagovi launched in June 2021. Zepbound arrived later in November 2023. And since then, they have surged in popularity. These brands are dominating, even with cost and access issues. They've gone from specialized treatments to household names to jingles on commercials, and they're shaping a new era of obesity care. The study also took a look at the role of telehealth in GLP-1s and obesity care. Let's talk about how people are actually getting access to care because this part matters too. Telehealth is booming. Between 2019 and 2024, obesity-related telehealth claims rose 3,483%. That's a massive leap. Well, why does that matter? Because telehealth breaks down barriers. It helps people in rural areas, busy parents, and folks without transportation all get care without the wait or the drive. We've spoke to many people in our community who have finally gained access to GLP-1s due to a telehealth visit, due to finding a doctor online who is not judgmental and who is trained. Unfortunately, their local physician either did not have the training or the attitude to take care of their patient. This technology isn't just convenient, it's saving lives. Let's talk about something that often goes unnoticed, the diagnosis gap, and what it means for people living with morbid obesity. Between 2019 and 2024, the diagnosis of morbid obesity rose by 17.9%. That's a meaningful increase, but it's still not enough to reflect the reality on the ground. Morbid obesity, also known as class three obesity, is defined as having a BMI of 40 or higher, or a BMI of 35 or higher, with serious related health conditions like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, or sleep apnea. It's what I was personally diagnosed with. This is not just about appearance. Morbid obesity is a serious chronic disease that raises the risk of heart failure, cancer, liver disease, joint degeneration, and more. It's a diagnosis that should unlock real care. But here's the problem. According to the CDC, more than 40% of U.S. adults meet the medical criteria for obesity. Yet in the Fair Health Claims data, one of the largest collections in the country, only 15.7% of adults had an official diagnosis of overweight or obesity in 2024. That's a massive gap. And it's not just a paperwork issue. If it's not in your medical record, you cannot get treatment. No access to GLP-1s, no referral for surgery, no behavioral support, no insurance coverage. We've said it before, Obesity is a disease, and it's important to say over and over again. It's not your fault. It is a disease, but it's one that often goes undiagnosed until someone speaks up. So if you think this might apply to you, talk to your doctor, ask for a diagnosis, get it on the record, because when it's documented, you can finally start getting the care you deserve. It's an interesting report, don't get me wrong, but let's talk about what the report misses. Well, before we talk about what to do, let's be honest about what's missing from this report. The Fair Health data is powerful but incomplete. It only includes people with commercial insurance, excluding those with Medicaid or no insurance. That's a considerable portion of the population that are completely left out. There's no information available on how many prescriptions were denied or how much people had to pay out of pocket. The report also fails to distinguish between compounded GLP-1s, which we know have grown exponentially, and the branded ones from Lilly and Novo Nordisk, despite many people currently accessing the medications through this route. There's also nothing about whether people stayed on the medication or why they may have stopped. We don't know how much weight they lost or whether they felt better or worse. And while it shows a significant drop in behavioral health support, it doesn't explain why. Was it cost, stigma, lack of referrals, or simply lack of doctors, nutritionists, therapists actually do the work? That's why the downsides exist, to tell the part of the story that's not in the claims data, to tell the patient's story, to tell your story, to tell my story, to tell Lorraine's story. 
Now that you've seen the numbers, what can you do with this information? First, start with a conversation. Go to your doctor. Request an evaluation for being overweight or obese. Bring it up. Don't be afraid. If it's not in your chart, it's like it does not exist. And if it doesn't exist, you cannot get treatment. Then you get a full workup. That means labs, vital signs, and a physical examination. Ask for a baseline on your blood pressure, your blood sugar, cholesterol, and everything else that impacts your metabolic health. If GLP-1s are right for you, talk through the options. And if they're not, there are still other paths forward. Nutrition, physical therapy, behavioral health, surgery. You deserve a plan. Work with a team. Your doctor, a dietitian, maybe even a therapist or a health coach. Because this isn't just about shrinking your body. It's about healing your relationship with food, your health, and yourself. Don't wait for things to get worse. Be your own advocate. You deserve genuine care, real treatment, and real support. Don't be like me, honestly. Why did I start? Because I was scared to death to die. Because my mother had died only a few years older than I am right now, and I was terrified that I would not see my girls get married. I was terrified that I would never meet a grandbaby. I was feeling bad, I was overweight, and I was ready to change. So again, don't wait for things to get worse. Be your own advocate. You deserve health care, real treatment, and real support. This report confirms what we know. GLP-1s are changing lives, but most people still aren't getting help. Let's fix that. One story, one step at a time. Let's fix that by calling for better accessibility, better affordability. Let's require the manufacturers to take care of patients. Let's expect better affordability. Let's expect better accessibility. Reach out, talk to the manufacturers, talk to your Congress people. The system has to change. It's not, it doesn't work now for anybody, regardless of whether you're obese or not. It's expensive, bloated, and inefficient, and we as the American people can change that. Let's fix it. We can change the system. We can become healthier and happier. If this helps, please hit the like button, subscribe, and visit thedownsize.org. Join our email list to stay connected, especially now that Facebook is cracking down on GLP-1 groups. Be sure to check out our website, thedownsize.org, for our GLP-1 Companions product store. We are, of course, Amazon affiliates, so we make a small commission. Check it out. You might find something that's helpful. Thank you very much for watching today. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think of the numbers. Tell us if you think it'll make a difference. My name is Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. <laughs>